Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very, very interesting topics to go over. First, we're gonna talk about Shanique Grant, a former Miss Olympia in women's physique. She retired a couple of years ago, I think two years ago, and she was extremely young when she won that title, I think she was 23 or 24. Uh, now she's coming back, as you can see. But this time around, she won't be doing women's physique. She's actually going to be coming back and doing wellness division. How do we know this? Well, first of all, first I saw it on Bison Tries Instagram page, but I thought, how the hell do they know? I followed her on her IG. I didn't catch anything, but then I went back and I saw this photo. It's just a comparison photo, like a transformation. In the caption, she says she doesn't know what is the time difference, but it's like a recent. And in the comments, a lot of people, a bunch of people were speculating that she would do really good in wellness because here she's hitting a wellness pose. And finally, somebody asked her, are you switching to wellness division? And she said, I am. So she confirmed it. She even shared the, the, this post by Bison Tries on her story. And also she replied in the comment section. She says, for anyone who says anything regarding my retirement, I was extremely unhealthy internally and my environment. The last two years I gained so much clarity of life and purpose. It's like giving, gaining a new lung. Thank you to those who are sweet and welcoming me back uh, into the industry. It means the world to me. And yeah, I'm really happy that she's coming back because this is arguably the most genetically gifted woman that ever competed in any bodybuilding division or fitness division or whatever. Like, you could name a couple of other women, like Iris Kyle maybe and some others. There's a lot of great female competitors, but if I had to pick one, it would be her. She is the female version of Ronnie Coleman in bodybuilding, basically. And she never really went too far. She was doing women's physique. She never really went to bodybuilding because when she was competing, there was no bodybuilding at the Mr. Olympia. She could have been a great bodybuilder as well, but women's physique is very close to bodybuilding. So she was pretty muscular. However, with all that muscularity, she also maintained a very good level of femininity. She still looked beautiful. Like her face looked really good still. Usually women who use who abuse anabolic steroids, they, they kind of ruin their facial lines. She didn't really do that. Even her body, even though it was pretty muscular, it still looked you know, attractive, like she was still looking, she still looked feminine, so that's why she probably had the best genetics of all time, so the question is why she didn't win more than two Mr. Olympia titles, I mean, there is Iris Kyle who won 10 Olympia titles in bodybuilding before bodybuilding was uh, removed from the Mr. Olympia, the reason is because she lost to Sarah Villegas, uh, how did she lose against her? I mean, she was, Shanique definitely was more genetically gifted. She wasn't as conditioned. That one year, she didn't really bring crazy conditioning. Sarah outconditioned her and uh, she deservedly won. As you can see, Shanique was definitely more gifted genetically, structurally, but she wasn't exactly in perfect shape. And after that loss, uh, it seemed like she was bitter. She didn't really like the decision. She didn't agree with that. Uh, she thought she deserved to win, but for some reason, they gave it to the other girl and uh, she decided to retire. That decision was rather controversial. There was a lot of talk about it back in the day. There was a lot of speculation, the real reason why she retired. But let's not talk about that. I mean, if you talk about genetics, you could say that she was more gifted but she was obviously not as sharp that one year she kind of missed the mark a little and sarah edged her and i and i agree with the decision I, I saw that happening but yeah unfortunately at the time we lost a very genetically gifted competitor but she is coming back and she's doing wellness now there are two questions that come to mind why is she doing wellness now? Why is she not doing woman's physique? Well, the reason, the obvious reason would be that she probably doesn't want to ruin her femininity. Um, wellness is definitely a way more feminine division. You don't have to get super shredded. You don't have to really chase crazy conditioning. You don't have to get super hard. You can be softer. You can be a little bit more fat and you're going to be healthier. So she won't have to push her body to the limits in order to win. 
And with her genetics, I'm pretty sure she can dominate the wellness division as well. And that is the other question. How well will she do in wellness? I have no idea, honestly. I mean, I'm sure she's gonna be really good. But can she, like, win the Olympia in wellness? I don't know, man. I'm not so sure about that. We'll see. I mean, right now, we got Franciali Matos, who is dominating the wellness division for the last two years. And, uh, man, she is really something. She is really, really good. And she's really dominating. Of course, she is Brazilian. And I don't know if Shanique has the potential to beat her. Like, in women's physique, sure, she would probably destroy her. Like, she's pretty much perfect for women's division. For women's physique, sorry, if she's in condition. But wellness? I mean, look at this. <laughs> look at this madness. I mean, this is... This is just really insane. This is ridiculous. Can Shanique bring something like this? I don't know. It's but it's possible. Like Shanique has probably smaller waist than Francielli here. And I don't know about the glutes. I don't know if she has bigger glutes, but she probably doesn't. Can she build up her glutes to be this big, this developed? Hamstrings as well and adductors and stuff like that from behind. Calves also. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be very interesting for sure. But, I mean, I don't, I don't think anybody's gonna dethrone this, this girl right here. I mean, she's something special. She's definitely born to dominate the wellness division. If Shanique beats her, that will be like, I don't know, it will be insanity. It will be really crazy. But I'm not saying it's impossible. Anyway, it's gonna be very interesting. I can't wait to see this. I'm excited to watch wellness now. So we'll see what's gonna happen. What do you guys think? Can Shanique Grant win the wellness Olympia? And what do you think about her coming back? Boom! What the hell is going on here? What the hell did Brad Wilkin do? What the hell happened to him? I mean, look at him right now. He looks twice the size than he was the last time we saw him. He completely transformed. I mean, this is basically metamorphosis right here. I don't know what the hell did he do, but he grew, man. Like, he grew a lot. Now he looks like a proper mass monster. And it's very interesting because this guy keeps growing like wheat for the past four or five years you guys remember only five years ago or four or five years ago he was doing classic physique and he wasn't really that big for classic now look at him and if you thought he was just fat bulky in the off season guess again look at his midsection look at his stomach there is no fat like he might be a little bit hairy a little bit watery but his conditioning is still very good for the offseason, so whatever he put on, it's mostly muscle. He definitely grew a ton. And it's interesting that he became a father recently, only maybe like maybe a month ago, even less than that, like two weeks ago. He, his uh, wife, uh, who is actually Serbian, by the way, like myself, uh, she gave a birth to, to his child and he's a dad now. And considering that, you would expect that he would lose some gains because he probably isn't sleeping a lot and he's, you know, taking care of her of his child. But no, apparently he grew even more. Maybe he was just eating whenever he woke up in the middle of the night to feed the baby. He was feeding himself as well. <laughs> I don't know. But he definitely grew whatever he was doing. I mean, this didn't happen in the past two weeks since his baby was born. This was happening for a long time over time. I mean, the last show he did, I think, was Romania Pro when he competed against the Behrouz Tabani. I believe he lost this show. I think he did another show after this one and he won that show and qualified for the Olympia. But uh, yeah, this one was probably more memorable because it was a really good battle, a really close battle. Uh, Behrouz was a little bit sharper, a little bit uh, bigger, uh, maybe not sharper, but definitely bigger. Uh, you can see Roman Fritz in the mix over there, but uh, Brad was good, like, he looked really good here. This was his best package up to date, I believe. He was in condition, unlike Arnold Classic, where he was big but not in condition, and he was definitely bigger than Chicago Pro when he placed second uh, right after Hunter Labrada. So this was a really good combination for, for, for Brad and... Brett, you guys know, I mean, he's not complete. He was not 
complete. There was definitely a couple of body parts that he needed to improve, like his quads, for example, probably his arms, especially bicep peaks, and just overall density and thickness, because, again, he's pretty new in bodybuilding. Again, he was competing in classic physique a couple of years ago, and he grew a lot in the past few years, really fast. So he's not out of the oven yet, but he has that kind of plastic look that Phil Heath, for example, used to have. He has a really clean look, he can get conditioned really easily, he can grow, as you can see, very rapidly. So I believe there is a bright future ahead of Brad Wilkin. I kind of always felt like that. I always thought he was gonna be, you know, top 6 Olympian at some point, if everything goes well for him. I mean, what would stop him? Look at his physique, like, it's pretty much flawless. I mean, all he needs is just more muscle, and that's basically it. Real quick, guys, let's take a look at 2021 Chicago Pro when he placed second after Hunter Labrada. He was definitely smaller than he is today or that he was last year. Uh, but, uh, I mean, look at that. Look at what I, what I was telling you about the plastic look, about the separation, about the details, about the, the symmetry, the proportions, the lines, uh, the conditioning. The, 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 the fibers, the way his body, the way his fibers are moving when he's posing, like he has all the tools to really be great, what he needs, the only thing that he was lacking was just simply mass, and I'm saying simply, for a lot of people it's not simple to add more muscle, but for him it's happening, now from what I heard from him, it's not happening easily, he has to eat a ton of food, he has to like drink uh, uh, fruit juices to get the sugars in, to get to also a lot of fat, to find the easiest ways to put the calories in. And as long as he's succeeding at that, his body is growing. And apparently he found a way to get the calories in because he grew. He grew a lot. Like he is really massive right now. I think he's qualified for this year's Olympia. I don't know if he's going to be doing it. I mean, he definitely has enough time to get shredded, but I didn't really hear any announcements. And considering the fact that he just became a father, maybe he's gonna delay that for next year, but maybe not. I hope not. I hope you're gonna see him at the Olympia this year, if he is qualified, in fact, but I believe he is. And uh, what can he do? Oh, man, if he is much bigger than the last time he was on stage, I could see him cracking the top 10. I don't think it's impossible. I mean, it's gonna be really tough for anybody to crack the top 10, but... I believe Brad has all the tools necessary for that. What do you guys think? All right, this one was really, really interesting for me. In my previous video, you guys saw an update of Urs, in which he was just posing. It was a posing video of him only, just himself. But today, he posted this photo comparing himself to a open bodybuilder, Anton Voyant. And now this is the guy that won pro shows multiple times. I believe he won uh, at least three shows in the past two or three years. So last year, Anton was very close second to Ian Wallier at Vancouver Pro. And then he, I believe, he won Chicago. A year before that, he won California Pro. He may have won another pro show. And this is an Olympian. This is the guy that wins pro shows. Consider also the fact that he's standing closer to the camera than Urs is, and he is not looking any bigger. Also, consider the fact that Anton's best body part, by far, by far, are his legs. Are his legs dwarfing Urs's legs? Absolutely not. I would argue and say that Urs's legs are looking even better, probably. And as far as the upper body, yeah, he might be a little bit bigger, but I don't think he's rounder. I don't know how much bigger he really is. I mean, he's sitting closer to the camera. Now, I believe Antoine is not at his very best right now. And I asked him the question in the comment section. I think he's off. I think he has been off for a while. I think that explains the situation. <laughs> I mean, Urs definitely did gain a lot since the last show. I mean, his face completely changed since the Arnold Classic. His face looks completely different. He looks like... I don't know, man. He reminds me a lot of, a lot of Torian Yates now. Oh, Torian at his biggest. He has the similar he has a similar jawline and like thick neck. And as you can see that he is really big and full right now everywhere. I mean, he filled up his glycogen and his body fat is still very low. He is holding some water, but not a lot. 
And that's why Urs looks so big and full. And when he dies down, I mean, somebody mentioned in the comment section that he could do the open. But he still has a couple of uh, pounds, actually, like maybe five up to ten pounds uh, of weight uh, in classic physique. So he still didn't max out his body in classic physique. So I don't see how he could do the open. But when I look at these photos of him in the offseason... I mean, I don't see why not, why he wouldn't be able to do the Open. And he should try, just for fun. I mean, look, just show up something like this. Maybe just, you know, get the, a little dehydrated and just show up on the stage, full, like this, full-blown. Because, like, he has really good legs. He has probably, definitely, I would say, definitely bigger, better legs than Chris Bumstead. Yeah, but that's the only body part that he has better than Chris. I mean, quads, hamstrings, glutes, and calves, like, lower body is truly exceptional, and yeah, he's lacking in the upper body, but, I mean, Antoine is also, like, Antoine's is, Antoine is dominant in lower body, in legs, upper body, he's a little bit flatter, a little bit smaller, and so is Urs, but Urs actually looks rounder now, that he's fuller, now that he rebounded nicely from the show that he did, so I was really surprised when I saw this, Honestly, he looks more impressive than Antoine right now, and he looks like, if Antoine is a proper open-class bodybuilder, and then Urs is also, I mean, <laughs> then Urs would also do well in open bodybuilding. I mean, this was really surprising, I don't know how is this possible, the only explanation, there, there are two possible explanations, one is Antoine is like completely off, and he's at his worst, which I don't believe is really the case, I mean, maybe he's a little bit off, Maybe he's, at, he's not at his absolute best, but you can see that he's looking very good. He's not, like, looking horrible. And the other option would be that Urs is actually this big in the offseason. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comment section. Do you think Urs could do the Open and do it successfully? Should he do the Open? Should he try it just for fun? And uh, is he really this big? I mean, I don't know. This, this photo is confusing me a lot. He says he has 5 to 10 pounds to make the weight in Classic, and here he is in the offseason dwarfing open bodybuilders. So, I don't know what to think. You guys tell me in the comment section down below what do you think. Like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel, and if you want to show me some love, you want to support me, you enjoy the content that I'm making, you want to make sure that I keep making this content, you can support me by buying any of the old school lab supplements. There is the link down below in the description of this video. And you also need to use the code EVAN, which will give you a 15% discount and it will help me as well. So thank you guys so much for all your support and for watching this video. Once again, guys, like it, subscribe. Thank you so much. All the best and bye-bye.